This is Adam Stelzner, a brilliant engineer and one of my favorite people on the planet. Hey, man, good to see you. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on down to help with this. Yeah. You know, I had a little extra time to break away from Mars. Oh, yeah. And he also happens to be the lead engineer on NASA's next mission to Mars. My day job, I work for a place called the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. We build spacecraft to orbit the Earth and to go out into the planets. You ready to see yeah, this? Yeah, I want to see this thing. All right. So it's friction with the ground that's making the wheel move forward, and the rocket is providing a torque to the device. When I saw the Panjandrum for the first time, I told Adam, I am in. <laughs> Adam is the best kind of engineer. He's not just an out-of-the-box thinker, he's an outside the building the box happens to be in kind of thinker. Three, two, one. Adam was fire. the mission commander for the Curiosity rover landing on Mars. Nuclear powered, 2,000 pounds, size of a car. It was the biggest rover that had ever been put on Mars or anywhere. And to do that, we needed to invent a new way of landing. We came up with the sky crane maneuver, which involved the rover having a propulsion system, like a jet backpack, and then about 100 feet above the surface of Mars, the jet pack lowered the rover and the two descended until the surface of Mars took up the weight of the rover. Yeah! Like Adam, I think the panjandrum is a good concept. Oh, yeah, there's a reason the kid. Yes! But it immediately opened up, at least in my mind, several opportunities for improvement. Rockets never fire the exact way you want them to fire. They fire a little bit much, a little bit less. And so the thing's going to be moved around by the rockets going on and off. It's not stabilized as much as it could be. So I think we've got a trick that we're going to try. Eliminate the rockets first and foremost. We're going to try and do this with all the angular momentum in a flywheel. Wow, you can store a huge amount of energy that way. It's also fantastically dangerous, just like rockets. <laughs> Instead of using rockets, we're going to use centrifugal force to power our panjandrum. So we're gonna use the same wheels as the original. We're gonna move them closer together. Their axle is going to be a truck axle, onto either side of which will be bolted, instead of tires, big steel flywheels. A flywheel is basically a large rotating disc that resists changes in its rotational speed. In other words, once you spin it up, it doesn't want to slow down. Tapping into that flywheel's energy by grabbing onto it with a brake will transfer that rotational energy from our flywheel to our inner wheels, propelling our panjandrum forward. Yeah. And then we will size these flywheels such that this equation is satisfied, and we'll make sure that we spin this bad boy up to the necessary right. speed. If Adam Steltzner's equations are correct, our flywheels will have to be spun up to 1,000 RPM to launch and propel the panjandrum forward at an initial speed of 40 miles an hour. Tomorrow's mission is to gather our parts and start building our neo panjandrum. The flywheel's here. Check, check it out. Holy macaroni. <laughs> Seeing those flywheels for the first time, it's a little terrifying. That is big. That's our power. This thing is big. It's one thing where it's numbers on a whiteboard or a piece of paper. It's another thing to see it in the flesh. Good. Yes. There we go. Yeah. We've mounted our twin five-foot flywheels on a perfectly balanced custom axle. Each flywheel weighs 450 pounds, so it's going to take a fair amount of horsepower to get them up to speed. To do that, we've assembled a 40-horsepower, 72-volt motor and battery package. Oh! Wow. That's uh, close to 7,000 RPM. Yeah. The man running our motor is Marcos Ramirez, artist, fabricator and electric vehicle mechanic. He's going to spin our flywheel up to 1,000 RPM, at which time I'll uncouple the motor to allow them to spin freely. Then we'll see if our flywheels and axle hold together under these tremendous forces. This spin test we're about to do is pretty much the most dangerous thing we're doing in this whole episode. We are spinning this up as fast as we can, hopefully past 1,000 RPM, or about 17 revolutions per second. That's nearly 1,000 pounds of angry steel rotating at a stupidly high rate of speed. 
If this thing escaped, it's going right through that door, right through the fence, right into the street. That's why we parked some very heavy vehicles on the other side of the store. One, two, three up. Hopefully it hangs together and doesn't rip itself apart. The various other failure modes are sounds that are horrifying, like a you know, something like that. That kind of vibration could cause our entire pandemonium to jump off of its launch platform. At the first sign of trouble, I will cut this test short. And I'm ready to throttle when you are. Gentle, okay. ease it up. About one RPS now, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, one, one, somewhere around here. So, so let's, let's keep on going. Yes. I'm hearing a little, hearing a little bearing. Yeah. Now I'm feeling vibration in this. I think it's time to pull the plug. Everybody clear this side of the building. There she goes. <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> shifted yeah. because I think as we pulled it off, we put a, applied a torque to it. You can see the vibration of the axle. Can you see the vibration of the yep. axle? Yep. Well, the up and down motion. So, is, so that may be the, that coupler, the coupler. That may be the, the coupler. Axle. Yeah. This is still That's dangerous. Okay. Don't get comfortable. The power in these flywheels scares the pants off me. We only reached about 350 RPM, roughly a third of our target speed. This could have been a runaway train. Remember how I said, once you spin it up, it doesn't want to stop? Watch. I'm pushing against this with all my might. You could see how much effort it took to slow that down. That gives you a sense of the power. There are a lot of potential problems that have come to light because of this test, which is the whole reason to do a test. Uh, one of them is that we started to see vibration at about a third of the speed we were hoping to get, which means we might have to deal with a lower top speed. All right. For the people here, for this area, too dangerous to take this machine past where we did tonight here. So we're going to be deciding out at the site how fast is just fast enough.